Hi, welcome. I'm Jill Nichols. Thank you so much for joining me here with these online video lessons. Uh, you'll find a list of supplies on my website, which is just my name, jillnichols.com. And I hope you'll get some enjoyment and enrichment. Okay, let's get straight to painting. So before we get started, just a couple of reminders. Here, I'm putting some lotion on my hands. It's gonna make it much easier to get any paint off. It's also going to protect the, uh, give me a little barrier. The other exercise, I was using this char. Overnight, you can see I've let it settle out. I poured off the relatively clean stuff, uh, but this really got dirty, so I'm gonna put that aside for now let it settle out, or I might just keep adding my dirty stuff and let it keep settling. So I still have a little bit of clean, and then I've got my dirty. So I'm not going to be um, using that clean except for when I really want a fresh color. All right, very inexpensive brush that's perfect for these exercises. Notice it's a thin, flat brush. I have a piece of Bristol paper here, which is just a, a cardstock, thicker paper. Uh, I suggest you do these exercises on a thicker paper. Uh, it doesn't have to be great quality, just something that can take the oil paint. This is going to be our basic palette for quite a, quite a while for most of our beginner painters. But I'm going to always use two yellows. This is a Cad Yellow Light. This is a Cad Yellow Deep. This is a Warm Red, which is Cad Red Light cool red which is alizarin crimson uh, as a warmer blue it's, it goes towards the green a little bit a little more with a yellow and this is our our dark blue ultramarine blue so here we have yellow ochre burnt sienna and burnt umber these i call the earth colors these are our primaries there's three colors that are essential that are primaries those are yellow red blue and we'll get into uh, working with a color wheel and complementary colors uh, in one of the future exercises. These earth tones uh, I always keep separate and then I keep an area in the middle uh, to keep for my mixing. If I was using white, which I'm not for this exercise, I would put that out. Note, I don't use black. Um, there are ways to get a nice black without using black. Uh, you can use black if you want, but just be very careful because black can uh, really muddy things up very quickly uh, if one's not careful. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is put some yellow up here. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to put every color out. But paper towels are good too. But for now, for these exercises, really any paper towel will do. Um, they're hard to come by right now, and uh, you certainly don't even need to use paper towels. You can use rags, old t-shirts, or whatever you have around, something nice and absorbent. So here's that cerulean blue out there. And this is an exercise that will help you get started with color, with understanding uh, the basics of color mixing and really help you get launched on your oil painting. As you move on, you might find particular hues that you enjoy working with. Um, I try to keep it to the very basics uh, until we get more comfortable with color mixing. Now I'm gonna put out the earth tones. You see this is called yellow ochre. Now it's basically yellow with a little red with a little blue mixed in. Uh, so it's kind of a color to get uh, quickly to, to a more neutral color. If you're going to do landscape painting or portraiture, you're going to find it. Yellow ochre is a good quick color get to, to get to. Um, now this, this is burnt sienna. I'm putting a little more thinner on it just to loosen it up. You see it, it's an older paint. I've had it kicking around for a while. I'm using it because it's perfect for these exercises. And um, so just by adding some more thinner, you'll see it's starting to loosen up. And the brown. Uh, 
and then the dark brown. So that was burnt sienna. Now I'm going to put in burnt umber, which is a really deep dark brown. And this mixed with some other dark colors makes a beautiful black without using black. So here we go. So these are all the colors of our basic palette. Yellow, orange, red, red, blue, blue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And white would be the other color. So make sure you get all of these colors, uh, including a, a big tube of white to start. Notice I'm just using old jars for the for the thinner and uh, nothing fancy. And I will let this settle out again and uh, recycle that. So now I'm ready to start this exercise. What I'm going to do is be mixing and building out here. So the yellow is going to stand on its own for now and I'm going to mix these two yellows. Now for color mixing, I like to use palette knives. I like to have two palette knives. Uh, I'm going to make sure they're nice and clean, especially when I'm working with the light colors. I want to keep them nice and pure. I'm going to grab some of the regular yellow, this top yellow, the cab yellow light. And since I've got this nice and clean, I'm going to go in and get that. And I'm going to mix those two together. I'm trying to do a 50-50 mix. And you'll see just by adding one or more of the other uh, will give us a different a different color altogether. So I'm going to get a little more yellow just so that I'm a little more equally mixed. There we go. And as you can see, that's a beautiful, warm, bright <clears throat> color. Help us smile. Okay. So I'm going to take that mixture of the two yellows and put it right here. Can see it's very close but it, there's definitely a variation there we go and i'm going to put that mixture right here so it's this yellow this red goes right here you can see close but but there's definitely a little brighter it's a little brighter color a little more brightness to it Okay. Again, you can save these paints to, to start your first painting. Uh, you put them in the freezer, they stay. And um, again, you can put them in jars. Sometimes I'll mix all the paints into one big color at the end, and I get a nice neutral gray that I use. And as we go, you'll get comfortable with your own techniques of what how you like to work. So now I'm going to take the, um, I've, I've mixed this with that yellow, now I'm going to mix this and this together. So I'm going to take this yellow and I have to put more red out. This is the cad red light. You'll find if, if these are, if your thing is hard to open, a good old nutcracker will help open it for you if, you're, if your hands uh, you know, if it hurts your hands to open them, definitely use the nutcracker. It takes the, the stress off the hands. Okay. <clears throat> so now, take my other palette knife here, get the red. And I'm, again, I'm trying to do 50-50, mixing those together. You can see that red is a little stronger than, than the uh, cad yellow deep. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more of that just to really push it so we can see the difference between red and what it is with the cad yellow deep. There we go. And at this point I can just wipe my brush and pick up a thick amount of that paint and place it right here. So those are very close, but, but there is a subtle difference and it might be even harder to see in, on the camera. So now I'm wiping off the excess paint and dipping it in the dirty and getting back to zero with the, 
and I'm, I'm using very little thinner and, and just wiping I'm quickly squishing it in there and pulling it out and wiping it with the paper towel and I'm doing it until it comes pretty clear okay so now I'm going to move on to mixing the crimson oh, I'm using this disposable palette paper it's pretty waxy it's easy to clean off so I'm going to make myself a clean spots here too in order to be able to mix the paints purely oh, nice clean palette knives now again I'm going to mix this red with those three colors so I'm going to take this knife and crimson now crimson is a really strong color that is a lot of crimson I'm going to try just with on my palette knife to show you how strong a color that is you really don't need much of the crimson to tint the paint so so that's you can see there's a cooler yellow I'm going to add a little bit at a time That's a pretty good mix right there. I'm going to take my brush, put it right next to that crimson. As you can see, it's pretty close to that yellow ochre. We're getting pretty close. If I added a titch of this cerulean, it would all it would pretty much match that yellow ochre. So you can make your yellow ochre if you don't have that color. You, you'll find you can make almost any color from the three primaries, from the yellow, the red, and the blue. Okay. Again, it's a bit like cooking. If, if anybody, any of you cook, you'll know what I mean. Just cleaning my utensils here, putting this aside so I can start nice and fresh. Now, once we're painting, we would have all these colors mixed up. And you'll find it's easiest to, to look at your subject and pre-mix some of the colors. And that way you, you can just keep moving and do the painting. Um, I also advise that you always put all the, these colors out. Um, try not to get lazy. It's tempting sometimes if you don't see a certain color. But I have found over the years that if I don't put a color out, then I'm going to be really lazy. If I need that color, I'm not going to use it and my painting will suffer. So for the sake of, of, of the nicest, the best painting you can do, I suggest putting these colors out each and every time. Okay, so I've got a little extra crimson there that I can use for my next batch, which is the Cad Yellow Deep. I'm going to take all of that, put it here, take some of that crimson. Again, I still don't need all of that crimson. Okay. Even if you've been painting for a while, you might find this to be a helpful exercise. Or maybe if you've bought new paints and your hues are slightly different, even for that, you're going to find it very helpful. It's a quick reference uh, save yourself some aggravation of, of how to get to certain colors so here's this mix this is the crimson and the cad yellow deep and that's almost like terracotta red so if we were painting a flower pot for example we would know that that's a perfect uh, perfect color for that it takes a lot of the guesswork out of out of painting to have this handy. Okay. And then I'm going to take the crimson. I still have enough of that here. And some of that cad red light now these are both pretty strong so let's see what happens when we put them together you could probably add more crimson to this guy this red can take it and add a little bit 
more. That's about 50-50 right there. Notice how I'm using the palette knife. This is the shape that I prefer, but there's all sorts of palette knives out, of, out there. Uh, you're going to find, you're going to get comfortable with certain tools. Uh, now's a good time to develop good habits and really experiment with your tools and, and, and find what works. And each painting you will learn different techniques and different tools that, that really work for you. Okay, so take that mix and put it right there. Okay, so that's our reds. So again, I'm going to clean up my palette. Now, for expediency, I'm just going to mix all of these together and put them over there. There we go. And I might even use a different uh, piece of the palette paper for mixing. I think I will just so I don't have to slow down here. So, okay, so now we're to the blue. I'm going to take some of the, the, uh, the cerulean blue from this palette here and I'm going to mix it first with the yellow. So I'm taking some yellow with a clear, clean knife. And I'm putting those next to each other. That's about 50-50. And mixing them together. And you can see by mixing the two primary blue and yellow, we get a beautiful green. This is like the new spring green. It's a warm new growth as we're coming out of winter green. Now, it's very important that I get all the red off my brush now because red and green are complementary colors. And if I have any red on my brush, it's going to mix in with a green and it's going to make more of a muddy color, closer to a brown. So I really don't want that, especially in this exercise. Uh, you'll find if, if you're having trouble with color on your painting, you might find you need to clean your brush better. Uh, that's usually a good culprit. So I have dipped in the, the older spirits and then the fresh spirits and gotten the red right out of that brush completely. Now I can take that beautiful green that with that the blue with that yellow, put these right there. Okay, so you'll see this whole column is going to be that yellow there. Okay, I'm cleaning again. Now, I'm going to mix the cat yellow deep. Again, I have to put more paint out. I am putting a little less paint out than I usually do. Usually I'll put out big squirts, but since this is an exercise and I'm not using quite as much paint as I usually do. So what I'll do is I'll just start building it on this palette. So there's that. And take the rest of the cerulean blue from that other one. Take an equal amount. Now, orange and, oops, see I have green on there. I missed that. So, you know what? I'm going to wipe that off completely. Get this out of there because I don't want the green in there by mistake. Uh, orange and blue are complementary. So, if I put these right next to each other, they really excite each other. When I mix them, they turn into a neutral. Now, green is a neutral. But you'll see that this is going to be a more, not as bright, it's not that early green. This is more of an autumn green, just as we're losing our leaves. And that's because they're closer in complementary color. Even That's a cad red deep, but uh, yellow deep, but uh, it certainly looks like an orange. So 
there we go that's going to go right there so you're starting to get the idea of, of, of what it, what these shifts do just the minor color changes in yellows even or in blues or reds uh, of a different hues are going to give us completely different mixes completely different looks okay and now I'm going to mix the blue with the two reds. So again, I'm going to clean my brush. Notice I don't want to do that. Okay. I don't want to leave my brush in the thinner because it will ruin what will happen is the brushes that the, they will they'll bend up here. So to keep your brushes in really nice shape, you want to lie them flat or keep them upside down like this in the holder uh, once you've washed them you need to dry them flat wash them only in cool water and uh, again if you need to um, you know you don't have to wash them all the time if you clean them with thinner at the end that should be enough but once in a while you'll find that you get enough buildup where murphy's soap uh, if you soak them in that a little bit and I just use an old top of a Tupperware, uh, such as something like this or this. I put a little Murphy soap in there and then I will move the brush around in there and I'll let it sit for a couple hours if they're really bad overnight and you'll see it'll loosen that paint right out of there. Okay, so now we're taking the blue and mixing in this cad red light. So I need to put out more cerulean blue. And again, I'm just going to, I'm going to skip over the two reds here and put out some cerulean, same room if I decide I need more reds there. Okay. Again, clean my palette knives. You'll find that the cleaner you can keep it, the, the purer your color is going to be. Okay, so now this cerulean blue with cad red light, which I still have on my other piece of palette paper, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to mix about 50-50. Again, that red is so strong. You see it's more powerful. So I'm going to grab some more of the cerulean. And instead of mixing it all into that red, I'm going to take some of that red and mix it into this and you see that I get a really beautiful dark purple now I could even let me just push it with a little I'm going to add even more cerulean blue here let's see what happens okay there we go as you can see, it takes a lot of that blue to bring that up. And you can see the variations you can get by the amount of paper, um, paint rather, that you're putting in there. Okay, take my clean brush, put that right here. It's almost a brownish purple um, in this light, but um, it's if I was to add white, you would see it's, 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 it's a nice purple. Okay. Again, going in the dirty, thinner, swishing, wiping, getting that brush clean, and dipping in the clean, which is not quite as clean as when I started. That's going to happen. Uh, then I'll add it to the dirty, uh, and that's what I do. I keep building and and then let it settle out and use it again. So. Once it settles out overnight, it will actually be completely clean again, and I can use it as clean thinner. So you want to keep a lid on it. Uh, you also want to make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. And with your rags, you want to keep them in a metal-covered uh, garbage can uh, because the oil, the um, oils in the thinner could be a fire hazard. Okay, so now... I mixed it with the two yellows, the cad red, and now the lizard and crimson. 
So I still have some crimson on my older palette. Bring it over here. I'm going to take all of that blue. And that's definitely too much of the um, red. So I just used a little bit. Again, that crimson is a very powerful color. And look, this is this beautiful, hopefully you can see it on the camera. It's just this really beautiful purple. And that's going to go right here. And once you mix your own, you'll see what I mean. You'll be able to see that in person. What a beautiful color that makes. Okay. So I'm going to stop talking and put this on time lapse and quickly go through. Uh, I think you understand what I'm doing. I'm taking from here on down and building out. And I'm going to do that with the rest of these colors. If you see right here, I'm missing one. So I have to go back and figure out what did I do wrong. And what I did here was, well, let's, let's take a look. I, so I, I did the yellow. I did the deep yellow. I did the red here. And what I did is I skipped the alizarin crimson. So um, I will come back. The paint had a little time to dry. It's it's only been a day. You'll find you can go back and paint. Uh, you might want to wait a couple of days. But after a while, you can uh, with oil paint, that's the beauty, you can actually paint back right over uh, your, your paint on there. there. Uh, that said, uh, you don't want to do that too much because it takes away the freshness of the paint. But for this exercise, it's important, and I will go and do that. So I'm just going to do a quick little fix on this. So we decided that it's the ultramarine and the uh, crimson that I have to do again. So I'm going to take one of my palette knives, pull out a little crimson, and so that's a little too blue. Okay, still a little blue. There. Now you can see that without the white, this is almost looks like a black. And if I was to add these two colors in burnt umber, that is what I would use for my black. So let's go back over here. Okay. So now let me just show you, if I added a little bit of white to this color, you're going to see how it's really not a black, it's a lavender, okay? Now, so now I need to replace these two blues together. So I've got enough ultramarine pulled aside. I'm going to grab a little bit of my cerulean and I'll put it here. I want some room to move. Pick up this. Again, try to do a 50-50 or close to it. And there we go. We have this beautiful, and again, I'm going to wipe my brush, the excess, swish it in the dirty. of that color off and what I'm doing with my brush is I'm, I'm wiping it flat I'm not smushing it uh, I'm going with the brush uh, I may go like this and wipe stuff out or I may go like that okay so that's pretty clean I'm going to pick up the two blue mix which as you can see makes this beautiful color and I'm going to put that there now, if I wanted, I could add a little more cerulean. These are, look pretty close, but you can see how this is a little lighter. All right, so now I have the right formation. 
so gone ahead and labeled these I strongly recommend that so when you come back later for reference you're not totally wondering what these colors are that you did